Hello everyone, this is Adam Cyber Vigilance, and today this will be a YouTube premiere of Techie Tuesdays, and we will be covering exclusions and also a blacklist on the Sentinel One Management Console. So we'll start with blacklist. So the blacklist on Sentinel One it's by file hash. Um, so these are automatically updated by Sentinel One Cloud themselves using their um, uh, built-in AI detection cloud. So whenever there's something that isn't detected by a file hash detection engine, it will actually append to this um, to this database of file hashes by the Sentinel One Cloud. So that, that means next time it can, it can, the threat could be quickly mitigated um, using a faster engine such as the Sentinel One Cloud itself. So to add a new blacklist. Uh, simply press add new um, and then the blacklist type will be by hash. You can select which OS you'd like it on. Um, you've got SHA-1 uh, on here and then you also have so the, the SHA-1 hash and then you can also search that in threats and deep visibility with these uh, quick buttons here. And you can also add a description. So moving on, we'll move on to exclusions. A quick note, you can also filter them um, using the filter bar at the top. You can filter by um, hash path, signer identity, browser file type. This is in exclusion, so blacklist you'll only see. Yeah, so because there's no, it's only hash, you'll only see um, OS uh, blacklist source and not recommended, yes or no. So let's head on to exclusions. So exclusions aren't just by hash on Sentinel-1. So you can press new exclusion, create exclusion. And you can see the different exclusion types. You've got a hash, path, certificate, file type, and browser. Um, so I'll show you a quick note with path. So you can select the OS, uh, the, the OS of which path it's in, um, and then and then put your path in. You can also include subfolders as well. I think that would be quite important. But you do need to be careful that um, a threat actor can't could potentially abuse the fact that you've um, you've created an exclusion for the entire subfolder. Um, and you look at the exclusions modes um, where it says suppress alerts, they're actually, it's almost like a gradient of sort of um, the security behind the exclusion. So it's, so simply just suppressing alerts, that make, makes sure that nothing shows up in the incidents tab. However, it's, it might not be as interoperable as the, as the selections just below it, but then the lower you go down this interoperability, the um, the more unsafe it could be it could possibly be for your environment. So I would really really take some time to look through each of the interoperability modes and check maybe you just want to suppress the alerts. Um, and you can also select per engine, which is very interesting. And then of course you can add a description. So a quick thing with Sentinel One, um, one of the best things with the exclusions uh, on Sentinel One is the exclusions catalog, and it Bring, it lets you have pre-built exclusions um, in, their own, in their own sort of like built-in catalog. And this is great for, well, just uh, it, it's absolutely great for um, enterprise environments in general. So you can see you've got Cisco, Cyber Reason, Silence, Dell Encryption, Docker. So you can mix and match EDRs. Um, like if you, if you need to have like, some sort of encryption for... Um, uh, general compliance, you've got JetBrains, um, there's also Git and Docker. So if you have like a DevOps team or a software engineering team, you can um, add an exclusions from the exclusions catalog. Um, because a lot of false positives, um, or not a lot, but it's quite common to see false positives from these sort of, um, from these sort of applications. So Sentinel-1 have made these um, pre-built for you to add yourselves. And then there's also the Microsoft SQL Server as well. Um, loads of stuff in here. Um, but I'll show you a quick use case. So say if you had a DevOps team and you wanted to make uh, a Docker exclusions, but only for a particular group, if you allowed the Docker exclusion to be um, site-wide, that could potentially be a security vulnerability um, because um, there are possible ways for a threat actor to actually use Docker in a malicious way on your environment. So it's only it's only good to have, um, you're only, you should only, you shouldn't have to inherit everything from the top down. If you need to change certain groups' um, exclusions one by one, then definitely take the time to do that. Um, so I'll show you something to do here. So let's
let's say you have a De DevOps group. I'm going to create one just now. Uh, DevOps. And I'm going to make it a pinned group um, so I can manually select which endpoints I want to add to it. Um, and a quick thing with um, any uh, containers like Docker or Kubernetes, there's another detection engine called application control. This is just a quick, a quick note. They make sure that applications that are running on your container are what they should be and that it's not being um, used in a malicious way by a threat actor. And then we'll scroll down, make sure deep visibility is enabled if you have complete, and then create group. And then we can add group exclusions. And so we already have a global exclusion here for Atomic Red Team, just um, a threat emulation tool. But um, go to new exclusions, add exclusions from catalog, and let's type in Docker, and then select Docker, and then it already has the paths pre-built for you. Um, and it also has the um, interoperability mode um, already configured for you. And then exclude from current scope. And there you go, the exclusion has been added to that group. So that is a very, very easy way of creating um, groups with exclusions um, to sort of have that, that granularity in between your groups and endpoints. And it will really stop um, a threat actor from abusing these uh, p potential vulnerabilities and exclusions. And it will stop a threat actor from potentially abusing these uh, exclusions as well if you um, use a granular sort of um, system to add the um, exclusions onto. So that was just a quick video uh, for Techie Tuesdays. This will be on a YouTube premiere. I um, hope you guys liked this video. And I'll probably see you next week. Thank you very much for watching, guys.